Hey there, boys and girls. I am back with our friend Lucy the Ladybug here. And I brought my toy ant. That's right. If you had a chance to see uh, one of our other videos today, um, Lucy brought 10 of her toy insects. Oh yes, it's so much fun. And we noticed that the people that made these toy insects did an excellent job very lifelike. They made the three body parts that all insects have. It's amazing, Mrs. Neve. In fact, I brought a poster here that helps to illustrate that. Oh, Lucy, bring it on over. Okay. I really like this poster because it has a ladybug. Oh, yes, I see it right down there. Now, at the top, it does say insects, and it does show on this diagram of the uh, yellow jacket here, uh, the three body parts that all insects have. I know there's about a million different kinds of insects in the world, but they all have the same basic body parts. They have the head, then the middle section called the thorax, and the third section called the abdomen. They also all have six legs. Now, it's hard to see on this picture of the yellow jacket because of the way they drew it, but take a look at this fly over here. You can easily see the one, two, three, four, five, six legs. All insects have six legs. Uh, most insects also have wings, and most insects also have antenna attached to the head. Now, the legs are attached to the thorax, and so are the wings, but the antenna are attached to the head. Fascinating, Mrs. Neve. Oh, it is. Now, I thought it would be fun to build an ant out of Play-Doh. What a great idea! Now, if you have some Play-Doh at home, boys and girls, uh, you can build one too. It's a lot of fun. I've got my can of Play-Doh here. There it is. Now, I've already removed the Play-Doh just to make it easier. And because it's hard for me to show you the table, it's a little easier to use the whiteboard here as far as showing you the Play-Doh. Of course, you'll need to get the three body parts going. I have a wad of Play-Doh here. I'm going to kind of roll it a little bit. And this is going to be the head of my insect, of my ant, whatever insect you want it to be. And then I'm going to, well, I'm going to press it down here. You can just set yours on the table. It's much easier. I've been having trouble getting my Play-Doh to stick to the whiteboard, but I, hopefully it'll stay. Now, that's the head. We need to make the middle section the thorax. And I've got my wad of Play-Doh here, squeezing it around. Now, you could leave yours pretty round. I've got to get squish mine onto the whiteboard. And of course it's attached to the head. Let's hope it stays. Head, thorax, and then the abdomen, which is the uh, largest of the three. So, Play-Doh, Work in that Play-Doh, getting it nice and squishy, and we're ready to attach our abdomen. I'm going to try and make it look like it's larger than the head and the thorax. Let's hope it stays. Squish down. Okay. So here we go. We've got our head right here. Let's make a note head, and then the middle section is your thorax. It starts with the T-H O-R Thor A-X Thorax, and that is your middle section up there. And then your third section is your abdomen. Hopefully I wrote that in the camera. Yes. So we'll point to the abdomen there. Now, as we mentioned also, all insects have six legs, so we're going to make the six legs out of Play-Doh, and we're going to attach those to the middle section, the thorax. So I've just got a little piece of Play-Doh here, and I'm going to do the rolling method. Oops, part of it fell off. This works better with newer Play-Doh. But here's one of my legs for my ant, and I'm going to have one right there. It's attached to the thorax. Let's get another one. Again, here's my bit of Play-Doh. Uh, I really need new Play-Doh. 
but I've got my second leg here attaching to the thorax. Okay, let's get a third leg going. Wad of Play-Doh. And I'm going to put this one up here because there's three legs attached to one side of the thorax. And now I need to make three more that are attached to the other side to give you your six legs all together. Getting my leg down here. There we go. I'm up to four. I need how many more to get six? That's right, two more. Four plus two equals six. You know, math comes in really handy. Okay, here's leg number five, which again goes on this side of the thorax. Okay, I've got five legs I need. Yeah, you got it, one more. So, got my little bit of Play-Doh here. And here comes leg number six. So there you have it. There is my ant. Now, I'm not going to try to make its wings, but if I were, I would have to attach them to the thorax there. Let's go ahead and write legs, and we'll just have an arrow pointing down here to the legs. Um, if I were going to make some antenna, I don't think I will, but you could if you want. I would attach the antenna to the head right here. So, boys and girls, uh, if you have some Play-Doh at, at home, I highly recommend making some Play-Doh insects. It's a lot of fun. Now, we've got our Play-Doh ant here, and we've got Lucy's ant here. Of course, we have to read a non-fiction selection about ants. Absolutely. So let's turn the camera back this way. And here we go. It's called Armies of Ants, True Facts About Ants. And here's our title page. It is by Walter Rattan and illustrated by Jean Castles. Chapter 1, Ants on the March. The morning sun shines above the hot rainforest. Something strange is going on under the tall green trees. A soft hissing sound rises from the forest floor. Insects leap into the air. They hit against the trunks. Flies buzz close to the ground. And every now and then a bird swoops down to grab an insect. What is happening here? An army of ants is on the march. These are army ants. They live in the hot, wet parts of Africa and South America. So they are not in our part of the world. These ants feed on almost any kind of insect or small animal in their path, from grasshoppers and spiders to nesting birds. One army ant alone cannot do much harm, but hundreds of thousands of them are a dangerous enemy. Working together, they sting their prey. They use their strong jaws and sharp teeth to cut into it. Then they share the food. Get a closer look at those army ants. Yes. One would not be much of a threat, but you get thousands of, to, uh, thousands of them together like this, and that's a danger to, it could be, you know, a small bird or something like that. Army ants do not build nests. Hmm, interesting. They stay in a different place every night, under a rock, in a log, or in a tree trunk. They form a kind of living net. They use their strong claws to hook their legs and bodies together. The claws are at the end of each one of those legs. Uh, they use their strong claws to hook their legs and bodies together. They rest in a huge ball. In the morning, they separate and start off on the hunt again. They might march in a straight line or in a fan shape. There are no real leaders. One group of ants will lead the way for a short distance. Then another group crowds up to the front and takes over. This push of ants from behind keeps the swarm moving forward. There you can get a look at how they hang down at night. Hmm, interesting. Hooked together like that. The largest soldier ants stay on the outside. 
These ants protect the rest of the swarm from enemies. Every few weeks, the ants stop moving. It's time for the queen ant to lay her eggs. The queen is the biggest ant in the colony. The ants choose a safe place and gather around their queen. Some of the worker ants find food to share with the other ants. Soon, the queen lays many thousands of eggs. After about three weeks, the army goes on the march again. So here's a picture. That big ant here is the queen ant right over here. She's the one that's going to lay the eggs, you know, stage one of the life cycle. They wait a few weeks because that's how long it's going to take for those eggs to hatch, go through the larva stage, the pupa stage, and then finally to adult ants. Oops, let's go ahead and turn the page. Chapter 2. Ants have outlived the dinosaurs. Army ants are not the only amazing members of the ant family. There are about 9,000 kinds of ants living all over the world. The only places without ants are cold and icy, like the Arctic and the Antarctic. Ants have been around since before the days of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs died out many years ago, but ants are still here. Yeah, they're tough little critters. Let's get that ants picture so you can see it. There are thousands of different kinds of ants, but their bodies all follow the same basic design. An ant's head is usually large. Two long feelers or antenna stretch out from the front of the head. Here you can see the head of one of the ants. These are the antenna right there. An ant uses its feelers to smell, recognize other ants, and examine pieces of food. When an ant is busy, its feelers are always moving. The head also includes the jaws. Instead of moving up and down as our jaws do, an ant's jaws open to the side. Hmm. Ants use their jaws to pick up food, carry their young, and fight enemies. Many ants have sharp teeth in their jaws. So, as we were saying, all the same basic body parts. Now, a thin neck connects the ant's head excuse, to its abdomen, excuse me, to its thorax. There you can see the thorax right there. Three pairs of legs are attached to the thorax. The foot of each leg has two hooked claws. Ants use their claws to climb trees, dig up dirt, and fight their enemies. The ant's thin waist connects the abdomen, excuse me, connects the thorax to the abdomen. Sometimes the abdomen is called the gaster. The gaster holds the ant's stomach and a special pouch for storing food. This pouch is called the crop. An ant can spit up food that is in the crop and share it with other ants. Hmm, I'm glad we don't do that. It kind of reminds me of how the cows chew their cud and bring it back up again. I guess these two are sharing. Chapter 3, Strong Poison. Some kinds of ants have a poisonous stinger at the end of the abdomen. The bulldog ant of Australia is one of the most dangerous ants. Australia is far away, don't worry. This ant hunts alone. It hides under a low bush and waits for insects. When one comes along, the bulldog ant leaps out and grabs the insect in its strong jaws. The ant pushes its poisonous stinger deep into the insect. Then it tears its dead prey into pieces. Bulldog ants can run very fast. They will even chase people. Wow. Don't worry, as we said, they are in Australia, not here. Good thing, huh? The fire ant is also a stinging ant. It has made its way into the United States from South America. They have them down in Florida where I used to live. The fire ant's stinger feels like a red-hot needle jabbing into the skin. Yeah, I've been stung before. Fire ants are a big problem for farmers. They build large nest mounds in fields so farmers have a hard time cutting their hay. Fire ants also sting the, sting the cows. Goodness. So yeah, fire ants can be a problem.
Oops, I've got some pages sticking together, I think. Nope. Okay, here we are. Chapter 4, Working Together. Ants are social insects. That means they live together in groups, and these groups are called colonies. Different ants in the colony have different jobs. They work together for the good of the whole group. The most important member of any ant colony is the queen. When the queen ants are born, they have four wings, and so do the male ants. As soon as they are old enough, they fly high. Each queen flies off to start her own colony. First, she sheds her wings. Then she finds a good place to build a nest. She lays her eggs in this nest. Ant eggs are so tiny that people usually cannot see them. In a few days, the queen's eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae have no, et, no legs. Soon, some of the larvae spin white, silky cocoons. Others grow a thick, clear case. This is called the pupa stage. After a few weeks, the adult ants come out of their cocoons. Female worker ants are usually the first ones that emerge. They will gather food, defend the colony, and repair the nest. So here they've talked about that life cycle of the ant. Chapter 5, Ant Cities. Ants build many kinds of nests. Some kinds of black garden ants make their homes underground. They use the tiny claws on their feet to dig up tunnels and rooms in the dirt. These rooms have different purposes. Some are for storing food. Other rooms hold the eggs and others the larva. If a room gets too hot or too cold or too wet, worker ants will move the eggs and the larva to another room. There is usually a special room for the queen ant and her newest eggs. Thousands and thousands of ants often live together in one underground home. There you can see a good picture of an ant colony, an ant nest. It's as if you could see, you know, inside the dirt. Many kinds of red ants live in the woods. Some start their nests underground. Then they add a large ant hill above the ground. They pile up dead leaves, dirt, and pine needles and weave them together. The nest has many tunnels and rooms. In warm weather, the ants live above ground. During the winter, they move underground. Well, that makes sense. Carpenter ants make their nests in the trunks and branches of trees. Sometimes carpenter ants build nests in the wooden beams of houses. When they chew tunnels in healthy trees or house beams, they can cause much damage. Yeah, you do not want carpenter ants in your house. Yeah. So there's a picture of some damage that the carpenter ants have done by chewing through that wood. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Chapter 6, Food for Ants. Ants eat many different kinds of foods. It just depends on what kind of ant they are. Army ants eat insects and other small animals. Harvester ants gather the seeds from plants such as wheat. They carry the seeds to their nest and store them in special rooms. Worker ants use their jaws to tear off the hard seed coverings and then they chew the kernels into a soft pulp. This is sometimes called ant bread. Harvester ants always have a supply of seeds and ant bread in their storerooms. They're pretty smart, you know? The Bible even says we need to be smart like the ants when it comes to uh, storing up things like that and working together. Pretty cool. Leafcutter ants grow their own food in huge underground nests. More than a million ants often live in one nest. At night, the columns of workers leave the nest. They cut pieces of leaves from trees and other plants. They carry the leaf pieces back to their nest by holding them above their heads like umbrellas. For this reason, they are often called umbrella or parasol ants. Well, that makes sense. Let's see. Chapter 7, If All the Ants Disappeared. There are millions of billions of ants in the world. Life on Earth would be different if they disappeared. Here's why. 
Ants eat huge numbers of insect pests. Yeah, if they weren't here, there'd be lots more insects, and that would be a problem. Also, ants scatter seeds. Ooh, part of God's plan for the seeds, so more things will grow. Ants eat the dead bodies of many insects and small animals, so they help to clean things up, getting rid of those you know, dead animal ins and insect bodies. Other animals, such as frogs, toads, woodpeckers, liz lizards, and anteaters, eat ants for food. So other animals need ants for their food. Ants stir up the soil, enriching it. Without ants to do this job, plants and forests would die. Oh dear, so they are important for taking care of the soil. Animals that eat the plants for the food would also die. Thousands of kinds of plants and animals would slowly vanish from the earth. God has a special plan for ants, doesn't he? They are an important part of planet Earth. Of course, some ants can be pests, but overall, ants do far more good than bad. Ants are very special insects. They can communicate with each other. They divide up their work to carry out hard jobs. And ants work for the good of the whole group. Hmm. Just like we were talking about, we can learn a lot from the ants. The Bible even talks about that. The ant has also been successful because it is such a tiny insect. Other much bigger animals, like the dinosaurs, have come and gone, but the ants are still here. <laughs> Fascinating. Some very interesting facts about ants. We can learn a lot from them. Boys and girls, thanks for being good listeners. And Lucy, thank you for being a good listener, too. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Neve. And boys and girls, uh, let's learn from the ants. Yes, be a hard worker, help each other out, work for the team. Absolutely. Okay, boys and girls, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>